today's a good day. We're uh, at the park. We're hanging out. Amelia, say hi. Hi. So as you can see, we're at the park. We're hanging out, having a good time. So while I hang out with Amelia and do hide and go seek, you guys are going to be learning about resumes today. But before we do that, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to share this with a family member or a friend. I got a good friend of mine. His name is Jack. Jack came on the panel with me and we started going over resumes from a couple of individuals who submitted their resumes over. And you guys are going to get a glimpse as to what a technical recruiter looks at. So he's going to go through these resumes. He's going to look at their LinkedIn page. Sadly, for the first person on the resume, I gave him only a minute to look at it. We quickly realized that a minute wasn't enough. We are going to take some additional time for some of the other folks in order to, you know, give them better feedback on their resumes. So like I said, my good friend Jack, technical recruiter over at Sandia, he's going to give you his many years of experience in technical recruiting look at the resumes and also as well as the LinkedIn profiles, give them feedback. And then also you guys will take a look at what he looks for and some of the things that interest him whenever he's recruiting for a technical role. Hopefully you get a lot of value out of it. And after we're done, I'll see you guys on the other side of the video. Welcome to my good friend, Jack over here, who is a recruiter for Sandia Labs. And I had the privilege actually to work with him on several different occasions where he's given me great insight as to what it's like to be a recruiter and all the fun jazz that goes into the recruiting process and the interview process and all that good stuff. Um, so I'm not going to sit here and try to tell you this man's impressive resume. So I'll leave it up to him. So uh, Jack, give us a little bit of intro as to who you are and what you do and all that fun stuff. Absolutely, Lewis. Yeah. So I'm I'm Jack, you know, I'm a, a technical recruiter. I've been working within this field for about seven years now. I've worked for agencies. I'm now a captive agent, if you will, I work with the Sandia National Labs. Uh, but, you know, of course, these are all my views when it comes down to recruiting. Uh, this is just uh, the accumulation of my experience over the years, and, and I'm excited to share it with people. That's what I do on a daily basis. I reach out to engineers. I talk to them about their career goals and ultimately act as a consultant to them and excited to do it here on this video as well. So thanks, Lewis. I want to jump into the last thing, which is resumes. I know in your time, you probably looked at tons of resumes. I know you said you're in tech. Now, one of the really cool things, I had people that came up to me and said, hey, I would love to get, you know, resume looked over by, you know, say your friend who's a recruiter and see what he thinks. And so what I like to do is I'm going to, I have eight resumes, right? Just so, you know, right. kind of set yep. the stage a little bit. So I have eight resumes and I know that you're in tech. Now, some of these resumes probably are not in tech. So what I want you to do is I want you to take a look at them and I want you to give your honest feedback on what you think. All right. And so the, the interesting thing is, is, you know, obviously in order to protect their privacy, we've X'd out a lot of their personal information. But we'll say for the guys, we'll call him Mike. For the girls, we'll call him Mary. And you're just going to give your honest feedback on what you think whenever I present the resume over to you. And then hopefully people can take that knowledge and be able to apply it into their resume because maybe they are probably making the same mistake and they have no clue uh, uh, that they're making it. Real quick, before I flash it on the screen, what is the time frame that you guys take in order to view, uh, view a resume? Just kind of curious on that. On average for recruiters, it's between like four and eight seconds. Really? Yeah. That little? Yeah, man. It's I've quick. been telling I've been telling folks that it's like 20 seconds. I so I, I actually gave you a lot of <laughs> I didn't know it was that short. Oh my god. It can be. I'll tell you what, man. I'm looking for hooks. I uh, you know, if I'm going fishing, right? I, I gotta yeah. hook something quick. And you know, if I'm looking at 50 resumes a day or more depending on whatever i'm doing you know it's got to be quick and and you get you get to the point where you recognize hey this is someone that i want to look into more or no they're not even close i got to move on to the next so it's critical that resume resumes are written clearly concisely and they've got a lot of hooks on them for the thing that you want to be called about 
So let's look at the resume. Let's do it. All right. Initially, I like it. I'll start at the top underneath Mary's name. She's got her LinkedIn profile. That's that's a big thing. I want to know, do you have any digital footprint out there? I've got your uh, contact information. That's great. Uh, what's good is that I don't see necessarily address or location. It's not always critical. Um, so that's good that it's left off. If you want to add it, you can. It's just wasted space, in my opinion, um, unless you just kind of name the region or the, the city that you're in. So, uh, you know, Houston, Texas would be fine. But providing an actual address, not necessary. Going down into education, I like that she's got, hey, I'm getting ready to graduate from Western Governors University in 2023. Um, you could say in there, expected 2023. That helps me know that you haven't finished it yet. Uh, regardless of what's on the resume. Uh, so it looks like, uh, real quick, Jack, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, it looks good. like we're already out of time already. So that was one minute. So real quick, would it make sense to do another minute just to kind of go real quick? You want to do yeah, one more? I think so. Yeah, let's do another minute. There you go. Put the timer up there. Like I'll, put, I'll put the timer here. That way you can <laughs> see that. And you let me know if you need me to scroll uh, up yeah. and down and I'll take care of that for you. But we'll I'll put the timer scroll. here. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll start the timer here again and go ahead. I'll give you another All minute. Right. Scroll it. Let's see what you got. And let me know if you want me to go back to a specific page or if something kind of stuck out at you that you wanted to take a look at real quick. But that's pretty much it right there. All right. Uh, stop there. Go ahead and delete internships, not necessary. You're a professional at this point, you don't need it. Uh, if you're right out of school, go for it, but you've got plenty of experience, you don't need to do that at all. All right, scroll back up a little bit. Uh, anything over 10 years ago, you could start phasing out. So uh, University of South Carolina, Aiken, you know, start, start phasing that out. Making sure that everything is chronological. Let's stop here, so Braham, oil company and then university of south carolina aiken there's that gap right it's likely that you went to school there but i can't tell and i know the timer's up but those are the things <laughs> that i'm looking for is i'm looking for gaps i'm looking for an explanation you could say hey attended uh you know mba at that point etc otherwise i love that it's clean i love that it's in bullet point fashion it has the dates on the right and the title and the company name on the left. It's very easy for me to pick out. Uh, so in general, resume is very well done. Uh, you can just start kind of taking off some of those things that aren't needed. Uh, I like the fact that in the body of the resume, and we can get this in more technical resumes, but it does show that you have experience with technical uh, things such as troubleshot, point of sale systems, mobile devices with iOS, Etc. You know, those are the hooks that I'm looking for. Typically, as a mm -hmm. recruiter, I'm looking for technical knowledge. Uh, you know, we're living in a technical world, whether you're in tech or not, people want to know that you have experience with tech. So even if it's, hey, all I got is Excel, throw it on there. Like if that's the only thing you got, throw it on there. Um, but if you got experience with other tech, People want to know that. They want to be able to, to bring you in. So scroll up. We'll just finish it out, make sure I'm not missing anything. Otherwise, looks good. You want to, if you can, have a synergy or congruence between titles of what you've done in the past. That helps hiring managers, staffing people understand, hey, how much experience do you have just by looking at titles and dates really quick. If they say, hey, I'm looking for a customer service representative level three, they need eight years of experience. Now I'm going through your resume. I'm looking for those eight years of experience, right? So if your titles match up, it's an easy check. Okay. Mm -hmm. You've got the experience. You're somebody that I can talk to from there. Um, if it's all over the place, you're switching from job to job. It doesn't help me because you know, okay, you've only got two years of experience of customer service rep, but 10 years of experience doing other things. You're not quite what I need next. Looking at Mary's resume, I saw at the top, she had a LinkedIn profile. I click on that, right? As a recruiter, I want to see what you've got out there. And initially everything looks great. Um, you know, it's very 
clean on, hey, this is the experience that she's had, got the education up there, got the license and certifications, any organizations you've been a part of, you know, it's a snapshot. I'm not looking for the whole resume on the, on the LinkedIn. I'm looking for a snapshot, making sure that, hey, this is someone uh, that if I'm only on LinkedIn and I'm looking for someone like Mary, I got to be able to see it and it quickly and, and effectively. So yes, I, th I think uh, LinkedIn looks great so far. Let's do the next resume when you're ready. So let me know when you can see that resume. Yep, I've got it. All right, cool. And then I'm going to put five minutes on the clock and we'll go ahead and get started. So this is Mike and I'm going to just briefly scroll down through his resume. Mm -hmm. And it looks like he has three pages. So this is the second. Yep. And here is the third. Got it. All right. Let's start at the top. All righty. All right. So, and this, this is something that recruiters will look for is formatting and, you know, desirability to read. So I know things may get mixed up in pushing resumes off to other people and word and such. Always have a working copy in Word and always be ready to send off a, a copy in PDF. Uh, if you're going to work with a recruiter, um, you know, you figure out what they need and, and you guys work together on that, but be ready with, with one of each so that you can make additions to your resume in a Word document or pages, whatever, um, but then have the final copy in a, in a PDF. Because uh, as you can see, some of the formatting is a little mixed up, mm -hmm. uh, just harder to read, right? So be aware of what your resume looks like, send it to a friend, make sure they can open it. Nothing funny goes on. A lot of times when you're, when you're looking at a, the forms that word provides, it, it just screws it up. Just blank word document, start from there, make it happen. What kind of senior engineering job are you looking for? What kind of project management? Um, there's no header on that. So ideally you wanna say either summary or objective and be very clear in that summary. You want to say uh, senior engineer with X amount of experience, uh, as well as you know this, this type of experience. You want to make a very short synopsis of what you do. Objective is this, looking for senior engineering or project management role, uh, but you want to make sure that it's clear on what kind of job you're looking for within that. What kind of engineering, what kind of hook does it get the recruiter on? Uh, education looks good, uh, top secret security clearance, great hook. It helps people understand that, hey, this guy can is a good fit from that perspective. Six Sigma Green Belt uh, probably could go under certifications. I don't know that it needs to be under education. Uh, mm -hmm. Top secret security clearance could go up by your name even. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be down there, but you want it to be prominent and ready to go. Going down to employment, I like how he's broken it up between uh, quality, task lead, materials, characterization, et cetera, all at the same place of Draper, right? So yes, he's a currently a senior quality and reliability engineer, but he's done multiple things and he's broken it up that way. Uh, it might make sense to put dates by that. So if you are a, a materials characterization lead for three years, put those dates down by it. If it's all of the things that you've been doing since you've been there, it's all in the same job, make that clear that these are the roles that I held while here at Draper. Uh, I'm doing each of these, these, uh, these duties concurrent. So you wanna make sure that that's clear. Uh, Cause if, hey, if you were doing mechanical quality engineering five years ago, back in 2015 or whatever it was, uh, I need to know that as a recruiter so that I'm not calling you about that job in particular. So, all right, let's scroll down. Um, but I like the bullet points. Everything looks good, very accurate. He uses support a lot. Find a different word. Um, use it once or twice, but not six times or 10 times. Uh, it doesn't help anybody. Uh, Westover Job Corps. Uh, looks like you were doing some good things for about a year. Go ahead and put in a short period like that, go ahead and put the uh, months in the date range. So January, 2012 to January 2013, uh, hypothetically. You wanna make sure that that's clear, that you had the full year, it wasn't six months. You didn't join in December, 2012 and leave March, 2013, that kind of thing. So adding that in will help a little bit. 
um, go on down projects you're getting a little crazy that's a lot of projects and they were a long time ago i don't care that much <laughs> I... <laughs> sure but this is a lot um so go ahead and and pick one or two and then link the rest to a different website you know mm -hmm. or a website uh if you can put them on github go for it scroll down last little bit we'll do it Leadership, volunteering, presentations and conferences. Um, pick top five. You know, that's a lot of leadership and volunteering. It's good stuff. It's not necessarily relevant to the role that you're looking at. So pick the most current things that you're doing and the most relevant to the job and then go ahead and throw those on. Uh, otherwise, you're just getting lost in the, in the, the quagmire. Um, presentations and conferences. Cool. I like them. They're not critical, but they're good to have on there. Uh, I'm not necessarily going to spend a lot of time on them unless you have a link. You know, if you go and put a link there and says, hey, here's a, a recording of the conference or here's a you know synopsis of what I went over. Mm -hmm. Awards, always good. Um, make sure they're ideally relevant or, you know, well put together. As you can see, some of the formatting gets lost there at the very end. Um, Different colors on the resume, not necessary. Pick a color, black. I know we've got it on black on white, but you know, pick one color and keep with it the whole way through. So awards, presentation, conferences, those are different colors. They don't do anything for me. Um, you know, keep it all pretty straightforward and standard. So yeah, that's it, man. Let's see. So yeah, I mean, I'm looking at the LinkedIn. Uh, like I said, you know, you're looking for a snapshot. You're looking for what are the top three things that, uh, you know, a recruiter or hiring manager are looking for? What do you want to be called about? I think is the biggest thing. If you want to be called about a certain job position and title, put it on your resume, like put those keywords on there. Uh, this is your place. You can do whatever you want with. Nobody's looking over your shoulder at your work saying, Hey, uh, your, your, your LinkedIn doesn't match exactly what you're doing here in the job, or at least what I think, you know, it's yours. Make it happen. You, this is your billboard for why you should be employed with a different company or even at your current company, like all the good things that you're doing at your company. Um, so make it your billboard, make it stand out, uh, throw in the keywords and the hooks that people are looking for, and you'll be in a good spot. Uh, everything's pretty succinct. It's a good snapshot. Uh, you know, as I'm scrolling through, you know, you can't see what I'm seeing, but it's, it's relevant it's not wordy. It's not wasting a lot of time on things that don't need to be on there. And when I go and look, I can see, yeah, you're somebody that I would probably have a conversation with. If anything, I'd spend a little bit more time on the work that you're doing in your most recent job. Uh, expand that out more, especially if you've been there a long time, like he has, he's almost 10 years. Put it on there, break it apart, you know, show the different things that you've been doing at your employer the most recent one being the most critical because that's probably who they're, you know, I want to talk to you about is that job that you've been doing the most recently. Uh, so yeah, that's, those are the big things that I would say. And if you're actually looking for a job, there's things on LinkedIn, like open to work. Uh, here's my resume, you know, those type of things that only recruiters can see and you'll, you'll benefit from that. We have our next candidate here, and cool. this is the first page. So I'm going to scroll a little bit for you here. Yep. Let's do it. And then you have the second page and that's it. Mary has Mary. Number two has two pages and this is it. Cool. All right. Yeah. This is a, a it can be a good style. I don't always like it having side by side profile and skills. Um, it works for some organizations, some industries, personal preference. I like having one block at a time because then I can focus all my energy. I'm not split by leading, reading left to right and then jumping from profile to skills. Yeah, but it's ultimately you, you find what works best for you. Um, personal preference, I think at this point. Profile, that's a big chunk of text. I'm not reading that. 
I'm not. <laughs> so I actually had conversations with Mary and I told her just that too. I said, Mary, I'm not reading that. <laughs> I'm not a recruiter and I'm not reading that. Exactly. It, you get lost in it. Yeah, the, the text can be small. It's a big chunk. You know, it, Likely your sentences are going to be drag on, lead on sentences where it just goes on forever and it just never seems to have an ending. So two sentence max at the top. Uh, and it better be impactful. Like, I, I need to read this to know what you're doing. And it's got to have hooks in there. If you're just saying, oh, I'm a hardworking professional who does the X, Y, Z. No, that's not it. It's got to be chock full of the things that the recruiter is looking for in the resume. So if you're going into healthcare, it should have at the top dynamic healthcare professional with five years experience in X, Y, Z. Like, boom, that's it. And call it good. The rest of it, put in the in the body of the resume somewhere. But it, you know, I'm just not reading that. That's just how it works. Uh, technical skills or skills over there on the right. Technical, um, cut out office administration, customer service, uh, knowledge of medical terminology. Uh, I would take out data entry. Um, a lot of these can, can be combined into a few of them. Uh, Microsoft Office Suite, get rid of that. Really what you're looking for is what's relevant. You know, if you're in an Epic system, put in Epic. Uh, if you're Cerner, put in Cerner. If you're a different EMR, put it on there. But those are the types of uh, keywords that they may be looking for. I'm not looking for someone with customer service skills in healthcare. I'm looking for someone with Epic uh, who can deal with the interface, you know, those types of things. So that's where your chance to put in all those keywords that you're like, man, I never get past the uh, tracking system because I don't have the right keywords. This is your chance. Put them in here. Um, make sure they're the, the right ones. You know, if you're working with specific types of technologies, put them down there. If you've worked with them in the years past and they're all similar and relevant, put them next to each other. Worked with Epic, Cerner, uh, you name it, just lay them out there, make it easy. What type of medical coding and billing were you doing anything in particular? Put those there. Uh, it could be after in a parentheses, it could be a dash, you know, describe that out a little bit better. That being said, you take all those skills in that section and I want to see some of those keywords sprinkled throughout your resume. So mm -hmm. if I see, hey, you've got Epic as an example in your skill section, it better be in the body of your resume somewhere. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be that exact keyword, but it has to be something related to it. So uh, if you're in revenue and billing, then make sure you put in the Epic revenue and billing uh, keyword or the title of the, the software. I can't think of it off the top of my head. I think it's Tapestry. Uh, but if you do that, you'll be in good, good form. I like the bullet points. Um, go ahead and scroll down. I like the education on the right. That's fine. Languages, cool. Certifications, great. Um, if you're, this is in general, it's not always necessary, but if you have a short term job position, it helps to know was that a contract? Was that uh, something that was designed to be short term? Or did you leave because of? you got a better job, you know, something along those lines. You can sometimes put that information in there and allow the recruiter to, to figure that out uh, a little bit easier. Um, anytime I see blue lines underneath uh, uh, some of the text, that gives me concern because they haven't written it out or if it's red, you know, most hiring managers are looking at this through Word or something like that. So they're going to recognize any issues with uh the, the vernacular or the, the grammar in the, in the post. So, and then scrolling through the rest of it, I think we've hit on the big things. Everything looks chronological. Everything looks good and uh, you're good to go. So those are the big things off the top of my head. Yeah. And then the, you know, the last thing I would also say too, is um, similar to the advice you gave before, make sure when you send it that a friend tested it out before you, you know, obviously submit it because when I opened it on my end, for some reason we get these bars here. I don't know why. That's right. I am seeing that. And I wasn't <laughs> sure. So yeah. 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 So, so I've uh, opened, when she sent it to me, uh, she sent it to me in 
It looks like it was done in uh, Google Docs and it opened up fine there. And then it's weird because in Google Docs, it was saved as a DOCX format, which is Microsoft Office. And so when I downloaded it and obviously opened it up in Office, I get these little bars here. So I would say same thing as you mentioned before with some of the previous resumes, make sure that it opens up properly. Make sure, you know, if you want to avoid any of that stuff, your final version should be a PDF format where everybody is just, you know, there's no messing that up, right? Exactly. So that that's probably one of the big things there. On that one was, you know, she didn't have a LinkedIn. So oh yeah. True. How am I gonna find your resume if I'm not looking? Or if I don't have your resume directly in front of me, so how am I gonna find you? So if you need to if you need a job how many ways are you getting your info out there? So that's, that's just the, the plug on LinkedIn, have something out there, whether it's Twitter, LinkedIn, GitHub, you know, you find what works for you, um, but keep it active and keep it updated. So our next candidate here, he has a LinkedIn. I shot it over to you. So I'll give you a second to open that up. Let me know when you can see that. All right. I'll put five minutes on the timer and let's go ahead and get started. So I'll go scroll here go. real quick. And looks like there are two pages. All right. So first thing is there's no LinkedIn attached to his resume. So there's no way to get back to that. Uh, second thing is that uh, summary statement. Uh, go ahead and put summary at the top because you want to identify whether it's summary or an objective. Uh, mm -hmm. So that way it just kind of is a little bit more leading. It's wordy. That, that statement's wordy. Uh, there's a lot going on in there and I get it but you got to figure out a way to narrow it down. Aspiring professional, all right, how many years have you done it? Two years, one year, three years, you know, where are we at? Um, so that's, that's kind of the thing that you need to identify just from that statement. I haven't looked at anything else necessarily, just that. Uh, I would have brought the skills from the bottom up to the top. You don't have any work experience to rely on. These uh, guys right here? Yeah, I would bring skills and certifications to the top. Okay. You don't have any experience at this point or very little, right? You know, less than one year as a knock uh, analyst. So you want to show, hey, this is what separates me from somebody else who has similar experience to me. I've got certifications, two of them, and I've got these skills. And those skills could be, you know, hey, you were volunteering, you picked them up. Uh, you were working on it on your own, you picked them up whatever it may be, but at least you have those skills at the top and I can easily see them and then take it from there. So bring those up. And then from there, I like it. Uh, you've got some technical, but you need more technical in the, in the, the, the bullet points. Um, and if you're going into it, man, you should spend half that page on that job that you've got as a knock analyst. You need to show, hey, this is what I've been doing. This is where I'm looking to go. These are the minute little things that I've done that are technical that qualify me to move on to the next position. Uh, if you're just saying, oh, well, this is what I did, but hey, look at all this other stuff I did before I was in IT, I don't care. It doesn't matter. I need the technical, I need the meat. Give me the meat and you'll be in a good spot. So imaged and standardized laptops. What kind of laptops? What kind of windows were you doing windows 10 were you upgrading were you migrating you know those are the things that i need to know as a recruiter and it helps me get that hook let's get a hook and let's grab onto it uh, so just off of that first sentence i'm asking questions and you need to go on there uh, what kind of servers uh, what is byod um, you know i'm just going to go through some of the questions that i would have documentation on work procedures and policies okay a uh, redundant backup system. What kind of backup system for clients? How many clients? How big was the data? Uh, what kind of data was it? Uh, SQL or otherwise? You know, th those are the things that I need to know. Network switches. What kind? Were they Cisco? Were they Meraki? Were they something else? Those are the things that I'm asking and I want to know. Because uh, if all those keywords hit, then I'm calling you saying, hey, Mike, I know you don't have a lot of experience, but I got this great opportunity. Looks like you've been doing some really cool stuff. Let's work on it together. But if I don't see it, I'm just keep scrolling. At that point, I'm already scrolling to the next one. And then I'm like, wait a minute. All right. That was the first time it is in IT. He doesn't have enough experience. I'm going to the next. So I, I don't even want to look at the rest of the resume at this point because it's not relevant to IT. 
and I'm only looking at what you're doing as a knock analyst, as a, a technical recruiter. I'm going to jump over to his LinkedIn real quick. Yeah, yeah, I'll give you that minute for the LinkedIn. And I don't even know if we looked at this on his resume, but did he have his education? Where was his education? I don't know that I saw that. Uh, you're right. I, I'm going to go back to it, but I don't, I don't see it. You're right. I don't, I don't see it here. Okay. So that's, that's good. Uh, good catch. So looking at, like I said, certifications are great, but I'm looking at your, his LinkedIn and he's got education listed on there saying he was involved in, uh, computer science, uh, both the community college level and the four-year college degree but i need to know did you did you finish did you get any kind of uh, anything from those so that's going to be critical um and then looking at the rest i think in general yeah i would say again the biggest thing is it doesn't have to be a copy of your resume but you want to put as much detail in the most recent position that you're doing especially if you're new into IT or any, any type of new industry. You want to show everybody that this is where you're focused. This is where you're going. Don't look at the rest of my stuff necessarily. You can, but I don't want your, your time taken up on, on things like that. I want it on, what am I doing now? Where am I going? And let's talk about that. So those are the biggest things that I can see from his, his LinkedIn. Um, but in general, things look good. You can add your resume to your profile. I just sent over to you the next person and we'll call her Mary again. And so you have her LinkedIn. I'm going to share on my screen now her resume and five minutes on the timer. So I'm going to put five minutes and let's go. And then I'm going to scroll down through Mary's page here. All right. And it looks like Mary has two pages. And that's pretty much it right there. So I'll start off from the top and you can go a little bit into what you see. Got it. All right. Yeah. Same thing. Looking for LinkedIn at the top, not seeing it. Big chunk of text followed by bullet points close behind makes it hard to read. You know, first, I don't want to read the big chunk of text. So then going into those bullet points, it kind of brings that feeling of, I just don't want to read it all the way through. So separate it. Um, use space to your advantage on your resume. Uh, so separate that out. Um, ideally, if you're gonna do bullet points anyway, go ahead and just do all of it bullet points or all of it short uh, sentences separated by space, if that makes sense. So yeah, like I said, right now, I don't know if it's a summary statement. I don't know if it's an objective. I don't know if it's combined with the skills and areas of expertise, it's all, all in one. So you wanna separate that out so I know I can just pick and, and choose what I need to look at as it goes. Um, technical skills and areas of expertise can be their own two separate things. So separate that. Technical skills and then bullet point and go into it. Um, in general, if you've got more, uh, more technical skills than just Word or PowerPoint, like, Excel, go ahead and just take those off. It's at that point, it's assumed you you've upgraded, right? If that's all you've got, put it on there. But if you've got more than that, go ahead and drop those off and make room for other good things. Um, I like that she's she's labeled them out. That's good. Areas of expertise, again, same thing. It's it's a separate section. So areas of expertise, bullet point, and then go into it. And those got to be heavy hitting. Uh, bullet points at that point. Um, you know, if you want to be a customer service individual, that's what you put at the beginning. If you want to be more of a, a manager or a recruiter or anything like that, you know, those are the first keywords that you want to put. And that just goes to anything. If you're putting it first, that tells me, hey, that's most important to you. And so I'm probably going to have a conversation with you about the first few words in a bullet point or the first three bullet points, and then maybe go from there. Question is title. Do you want to be an executive assistant or do you want to be a recruiter? Which one's most important to you? And then put that one first. I like that she's done a slash because it distinguishes, hey, you're doing two different jobs and it's good. A lot of times people will just put one and then they're like, well, I really want to be a recruiting coordinator, but I, you know, put that on there. Like if you were doing it, put it on there. That's, that's the biggest thing for me. 
Um, if anything, I would probably put the company on top of title. Go company, title, and then into what you did. Company is really good because a lot of times, uh, you know, we're looking for pedigree. Not always, but it helps. You know, if you come from a big company and Baco LLC is a big company in the area, then I can say, oh, wow, you work for them. Yeah, you should come work for us. Like there's something to be said for kind of getting that company name out there. Um, then there's no synergy after that. So for six years, independence contract drilling, I'm not sure what that is. I'm not in that area, but it, it doesn't say the company. And it could be that she was with Baco at the same time and, and then just changed positions, but that needs to be clear. So put that on top, Vaco, and then go into what you were doing for those six years. Go ahead and scroll down. She goes into contract litigation and is paralegal. I would make sure that that is on the same page with everything else. You don't want it separated if you can help it. Put an enter in and bring it down. That's okay. You know, you leave a space. Then from there, scrolling good. Um, you know, it's all, all very similar. I think it looks very good. Uh, education, associate's degree, paralegal studies, it's good. Do you have any certifications that could be helpful in your area? Um, but then ultimately at the top, what do you wanna do? Do you wanna do recruiting? Do you wanna continue as an executive assistant? Make that clear in your summary statement or your objective, and that'll help you identify some of those positions a little bit faster um, in conversations with individuals. So looking at LinkedIn, it kind of goes in a different route as well. On here, they say senior operations specialist. That's totally different than what I read on your resume. And that's okay. Just know that if I'm looking at your LinkedIn and I'm looking at something and then I pull your resume, I'm looking for that match. I want to understand where, where is that coming from and, and why do you have it that way? Yeah, so on here, it's listed out senior operations specialist at Baco for the last mm -hmm. nine months. Uh, well, okay, well, that's not what you said on your resume. So tell me more, like, make sure that they kind of are, are marrying up for the most part from there. But everything else looks good. It's a good snapshot. Uh, shows where you're at, what you're looking to do. I'm sure Mary, well, this Mary will appreciate it. And so we will move on to our next person. We'll go ahead and get started. And this is Mary, maybe three or four. I lost count at this point, but <laughs> so this is the first page and it looks like we have the second page and that's it so i'm going to start off from the top again objective doesn't help me at all that's to secure a position well what kind of position what are you looking for be specific and help me to help you um even if it's just a general analyst position in whatever maybe but be more specific and then you can figure it out from there it's a little bit of a can statement you know to secure a position where strong analytical and technical skills can be utilized to improve the company's profitability well yeah i get that but what are you looking to do what are you actually going to do in in your your new job um, skills type 50 words per minute unnecessary i don't need to know that necessarily. I'm looking for other skills. You could put that at the end if you want as like, hey, yeah, I can do this, but it's not the first thing to put. Um, VMware, Vision, Salesforce, boom, I love it. But then it falls up by Word and Excel. And I don't care about those two. I'm looking for, okay, you got some experience with Active Directory, AirWatch, VoIP, Lotus, 0365, Azure, PowerShell. You know, all of those are way above 50 words per minute and and word and excel so narrow it down to the top things that you want to be known for if you got java on your resume i hope you can code in java just say like i may be calling you saying hey you want a java developer position i have nowhere near that well don't put it on your resume like work with each other you know if you've only touched it a little bit and you don't want a job with that necessarily take it off you know that's in general that's a good way to put it. But if you do want a job with it, make sure it's everywhere on your resume, <laughs> on the other hand. So that helps there. On work experience going down, do you see how the time period cuts off so much of the, the page space? So 2021 to current, man, that's a big chunk of room that I could yep. be putting in uh, information. So I would probably bring that over to the right side uh, that way it's not necessarily the most important thing. It's still important, but it's not the most important thing. 
you need to just bring it over to the right side, uh, out of the way. It's not getting in the way of any of the bullet points. It gives you more room to work with and then go from there. Bullet points are very high level and they don't tell me a lot. Um, you know, I see your team lead. Okay, how many people did you lead? Uh, your functional analysts. Well, what kind of functional analysts? Um, CVP slash GDIT, spell that out for people. They don't always know the acronyms. So if it's GDIT as in general dynamics IT or information technology, that's good to know, but spell it out for people. Um, tech savvy, useless, get rid of it. Uh, time management, useless, get rid of it. Uh, customer service experience, useless, get rid of it. You need to be putting in things that are relevant to the technology that you put up at the top if you're going for a technical position. This is all based off of me as a technical recruiter. You've applied mm -hmm. to maybe a uh, software analyst, uh, hardware analyst, you know, something along those lines. It needs to be relevant. And, it, and if you put a lot of technology up there, now put it in the body of the resume. Where did you use SharePoint? Where did you use uh, Dice? Where did you, or Dell Tech or Slice or, you know, Amazon? Where did you use Amazon? That's cool. You know, those are the types of things that I want to know about. The division between company name and title is difficult to recognize. So division of which Medicaid and then network specialist needs to be on the next line. Same kind of thing. Make sure that your bullet points are relevant and actually do a lot there. Scroll down, Lidos. Man, that's a lot of information on a job that you held three years ago, two years ago. Um, that's the type of information you want on your last job. I like that, but it needs to be on your last few jobs, not the one that's on your second page. Uh, it could still be there on your second page, but I want to see that much on the top as well. Down below, bookkeeping, you could probably just one-line it. That was a long time ago before you were in tech. You're not using it anymore. One-line it, call it good. Uh, education, you got a bachelor's of business administration and associate's degree from the community college. That's good. Um, do you have any certifications? This type of role, typically you're getting your A plus, your security plus, your network plus. If you're not getting them, get them. Like that's where it needs to be. And then put them on your resume. So cool. I'm done with the resume. I'll give you a minute to touch a little bit on the LinkedIn that you see there. <clears throat> yeah. So I know you guys can't see it necessarily, but um, you know, like I said, it's your billboard. So put your best foot forward. Um, picture needs to be taken by a professional, ideally, and it needs to show that you're happy and that you're someone that I want to talk to. If I'm scrolling through LinkedIn profiles and I see somebody that has either a terrible picture, no picture, or, you know, whatever may be, I'm going to the next person because I'm like, well, you don't, you're not engaging. I want to be engaged. Um, so that's the first thing. Uh, then title underneath that says associate engineer. What does that mean? Nothing. It means absolutely nothing. Fix it. Uh, if you're an IT professional, put that on there of, you know, software analyst, uh, IT support technician level two, you know, whatever it may be, but be more specific than associate engineer. What kind of engineer? You're not an engineer. I can see that from your resume. So don't put that on your LinkedIn and go from there. Does that make sense? Um, going down. If you're freelancing, cool, that's good, but it needs to be descriptive. You better show everybody in the world everything that you're doing as, as a freelance, uh, the types of technologies you're working with, the types of companies that you're working with. If you've got a big name or local companies that you're working with, drop those in there because that helps them understand, hey, you are actually doing something. You aren't just uh, fly by night, um, you know, actually not working or anything like that. Scrolling down, everything looks pretty similar to the resume. Uh, I would just put more information in there. You need to put more technology and the types of that you're using there. Uh, same kind of thing. If I see it in your skills, great, but I want to see it in the profile. So adding to that would be would be a big, big help at that point. At this point, you know, I would probably go to the next person. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily click on your LinkedIn to learn more about you because I haven't been hooked enough. So add more hooks, add more technical terms, add more of what value you provide as an individual, and then 
be engaging and exciting in the pictures that you choose and the titles that you work with. So I'd like to move on to our second to last person. Five minutes on the clock. Go ahead and get started. I sent you their LinkedIn as well. And mm -hmm. this is what we got. Just one page. Okay. Uh, education is good, especially as in the beginning of your experience. Uh, if you've got education to show, bring it forward. Uh, you're going for your AS and computer information systems is good. I would probably put in some of the courses that you're taking, some of the keywords there. So if you're taking data science, uh, if you're taking a Python course, anything like that, you can add it under there and that helps bring credibility to, to the education that you're expecting to get. Um, Google IT support professional certificate. Cool. Now, what did you go over in that one liner? These are the things that we worked on equivalent to a plus, if that's the case, you know, kind of bring in some of those equivalencies kind of help if I don't know as a recruiter, what that entails. So a little bit of description would be good. High school, go ahead and drop it off. It's not necessary at this point. Uh, GPA on the high school, not necessary, things like that. Professional experience, uh, well, I'd say where's his skills? Skills and interests need to jump to the top. Let's go ahead and get there. That's where I know, hey, these are the types of things that I should be looking for. Gives me a roadmap. So same thing. Um, professional experience, progressive, remote, that's good. Uh, customer service consultant, that's good. He's been there for a year or so. Add in more. You know, What are you doing? Um, what kind of tech are you working with? Even if you're a customer service consultant, you've likely used some sort of tech that they have there. So go ahead and put it in there, even if it's proprietary, because likely you could be getting a different industry competitor who says, hey, we want somebody like this with similar experience to this tech that we can pull over and give a 10% raise, doing the same job, et cetera. So it, it doesn't hurt to do that. Inventory specialist, forklift, system manager, all good things. Um, you're spending more time on them though than you are on your most recent job. So as you see, the bullet points are bigger. Uh, go ahead and bring in some of that to the top one and, and take it from there. Project experience, it's good. You got your personal website and you got a link, that's good. Um, you need a GitHub. If you've already got a personal website, you need a GitHub and bring people to that because you will be recruited through github if you're if you're good on there restaurant landing page it's good make sure your capitalization are all where they need to be uh you know if it's a title go ahead and put it on there project experience capital capital la per Pereira, capital capital restaurant landing page capitals throughout you know you want to make sure that it stands out like hey flashing shine this is what you need to look at leadership Good stuff, but it doesn't make me go, hey, I want to bring you on for a technical job. <clears throat> and and I like the interest. You know, you can keep those down there. You know, it's just kind of as a, hey, this is fun. So cool. I'll look at the, the LinkedIn real fast. And I think that the other suggestion is just add more detail. You know, if you're looking at a um, personal website or anything like that, you know, add in those technical terms that you use. Uh, it might have been on there, but like C++, uh, or not C++, CSS, JavaScript, uh, React, you know, those are the things that I want to look for as a technical recruiter, some of those hooks. Full-time software engineer student, that's good. You know, it shows that, hey, you're working towards this. Uh, you could go ahead and go ahead and change that to slash entry-level software engineer or web time or website developer, web developer, anything along those lines. Your about section, go ahead and just change that to straight software leaning. That's where you want to go. Make that the roadmap on your LinkedIn. Go ahead and just bring it right into it. Hey, uh, entry level software engineer, web developer working with XYZ tools. Uh, I've been learning this through school and elsewhere. These are the things that I'm looking for. Then on here, you know, go straight into experience, very similar to what we saw in the resume. Add some more details and you, you should be all right. But more than anything, that about section is where you're going to get the most bang for your buck because you can show, hey, this is what I'm looking to do. I don't necessarily have the experience yet, but I'm open to these opportunities. I want these conversations. The, the keywords are on your, your LinkedIn. You can make it happen from there. One other thing, too, that I would also say is uh, looking at, at, you know, Mike's, this Mike, <laughs> looking at his LinkedIn, too, is... I don't see any of the personal websites. Like if you looked at his resume right. when we were talking about before, 
there's links that I could actually like, these are actually hyperlinks that I can click and it'll take me to his page. And I don't see that in his LinkedIn. So that's probably one thing I would say as well. Absolutely. Yeah. You want to, if you got project experience and that's all you got, throw it on there. Um, LinkedIn should have a section for personal projects, things along that nature. Like I said, you need a GitHub. All right. And we're going to move on to our final person here. And our final mic. So I'll put five minutes on the clock. Like I said, you have um, our last mics linked in. And five minutes is on. So let's go ahead and take a quick look. This is his first page here. And then it looks like it's his second page. And that's it. So I'm going to scroll up to the top and have at it. Paragraphs, man. Um, yeah, go ahead and uh, uh, break that up into more digestible paragraphs if you will um in general on a resume your paragraph should be maybe two sentence max so if you got four sentences you should have two blocks separated it gives me enough time to digest that things are i can read it easily without having to dig because uh, by that third sentence in the paragraph I'm, I'm starting to get lost uh bring the skills up to the top bring the you know I think that's the big thing. Um, experience, let's go down into that. Uh, Cigna is there at the end. I would put that in the front. I always like to see the company first if I can help it. And then uh, title underneath that or next to it is okay. Um, but at least I, I know where you are because sometimes people will put weird things and it, it gets confusing. So I want to know where you were for how long and then what you were doing within that. So um, bullet points are good. I don't see any words that repeat themselves in the beginning. Potentially add a little bit more info in, in terms of, you know, practice lead. You know, how many people did you lead? Something along those lines. What kind of um, security assessments were you doing? Were you doing, um, I can't even think of them off the top of my head, but you know, I want a little bit more detail into what that looks like. Maybe a little bit more tech in there. Um, any frameworks that you use? I know it's the, there's a certain type of framework that a lot of security professionals will use within the IT sector. So putting that in there, um, were you just the manager? Were you the technical guy? Those are the questions that I'm gonna be asking myself is which one were you and which one should I call you about? Um, if you're a manager, I need to know that you're a manager so I can call you about management positions. If you're the technical guy, I got to know that so I can call you about that. Um, going down further, okay, so you're still a Cigna. You're a Cigna for a little while. A um, little bit more detail might be good. I see some of the technical in there, that's good. Um, but in general, you want to kind of see the progression of your career, which is really good but maybe a little bit more detail since it's all at the same location is always good. Uh, community health systems for two years. Is that where you started out in security? If so, great. If not, maybe add in where you jumped from, uh, you know, IT help desk to security. You might add that position in there just so that they can see the career progression and understand, hey, this is where you've come from and, and where you're looking to go. Helps me to build the roadmap of where you've been and where you want to go. Certifications are good. Um, they're not the big ones that I typically look for. And a security guy, I'm looking for CISP. I'm looking for Security Plus. I'm looking for, you know, some of those AWS uh, security. Uh, you know, some of the, those are the types of certifications I may be looking for. Uh, the CTPRP, I'm not sure what that is. I'm sure it's relevant in what you do, but um, you got to have a way to connect it. You know, that's equivalent to something else that always helps. Bachelor's in mechanical engineering. Well, that's interesting. I didn't see anything with mechanical engineering above. Did you just jump straight from mechanical to IT? And if so, cool, but have that connection would be good. Uh, Master's of Information Systems Management, that's cool. Cybersecurity, that's really good. Um, you know, that kind of information you can either leave at the bottom or if you're applying to a position that you know education is critical for them put it at the top just so that they get it out of the way immediately at the box is checked so they move on professional societies those look good i'd probably join a different one uh, as well you know there's there's other ones out there that that you can be a part of that are 
uh, more well known across the industry. And if I'm a recruiter searching for that uh, professional association, I'll ping your resume, if that makes sense. So find the other ones that are relevant in your area of expertise and go join them, you know, and, and you might get some luck from there. But like I said, skills go up to the top, add some more skills in there. Uh, that's not a whole lot. Uh, you know, I see solid work, solid edge, both mechanical in nature. You're not going for a mechanical engineer, so get rid of them. You don't need them. Uh, Archer is good. Compliance 360, SQL, MATLAB, Java. They're good, but they're not great. So add more technical. Cool. That's time. In general, LinkedIn looks good. Uh, you know, it's uh, engaging initially. It's pretty short to the point in terms of what you are and what you do there at Cigna which is helpful. You know, I don't see an area for your about section or your kind of summary section. So maybe adding in something there that'll allow someone to understand these are the types of things you might want to be called about, where you're trying to take your career, where you've been, you know, kind of describe that. Um, and it allows a recruiter like myself to know what to call you about off of a quick, quick glance. In general though, it mirrors the resume really well. So, same type of advice on the resume is, is translated over to the LinkedIn. So, cool. Awesome. Like Jack, that is all the people that I have for you as far as resumes and LinkedIn. So I want to thank you so much for going through that. And hopefully the folks who will be watching the video, they will also recognize their resume, take the advice, make the necessary adjustments. And for those obviously who you know, obviously that's not their resume. It gives you an insight as to how resumes are structured, what people normally write on them, and then what are some common mistakes that you found and, and how they can avoid that on their resumes. So welcome back. Hopefully you guys learned a thing or two from all the resumes that we had Jack review. There was some things that stood out and again, nobody is perfect, but I think the thing that we learned from here is, is how to take the information that Jack gave us, implement it in our resumes, and make sure we are successful in getting that next position. So if you found this video to be helpful, remember, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to give me a like on the channel as well. Make sure you turn on your notifications so that way you don't miss anything that we upload to the channel. And lastly, share the video with a friend or family member so that way they can work on their resumes and hopefully they'll get their next dream job. I'll see you guys in the next video.